Hi, and welcome to this video. My name is Ivo Otero, and today I will be describing how solar panels work and how they produce electricity. Solar panels and solar power have become one of the most innovative forms of producing electricity over the last years, and many industries and households are using them to power themselves. Today, homeowners have more than 150 different solar panel brands or manufacturers to choose from. What makes the products more affordable than ever before and is encouraging people to switch, at least partially, to this renewable source. But even though this technology has become popular, most people do not know how the solar panels really work or what they really are. What you usually see are not solar panels, but rather solar arrays. Each of them is a collection of solar panels, and each solar panel is made of even smaller parts called solar cells which are the ones that actually transform the energy. For that reason, in this video I will describe in detail how the solar cells transform solar into electricity and how they form the solar panels and arrays that power our houses. A solar cell is normally made of silicon, an element with conductive properties that allows this absorption of sunlight particles called photons that come from the sun. Modern solar cells, however, are not just made of this element and are much more complex. These are structured in several layers. At the top, they present a toughness glass that protects the layers underneath and at the same time lets most of the sunlight pass through as they are transparent. Secondly, we have the anti-reflective coating. This is what gives the solar cells the usually dark blue color which prevents them to reflect the light that goes through the glass. And even though the silicon does absorb light by itself, if this coating wasn't there, the bright and shiny properties that the silicon material presents would reflect more than 30% of the light, which will be highly inefficient. These two first layers serve for the practical issues, but they aren't involved at all in the process of generating electricity, which is the main goal of this technology. For efficiency purposes, solar cells mostly have three silicon layers, a so-called N or negative silicon layer at the top, which has extra electrons, a P or positive type silicon at the bottom, which has space for electrons, and a thin layer in the middle with a neutral charge, which absorbs the sunlight. When the photons from the sunlight impact the solar cells, they knock an electron from its spot, making them wander across to the N layer at the top, which presents a negative charge, and where the electrons are then collected by thin metal fingers at the metal grid layer. From there, they flow through an external circuit, producing an electrical current before returning to the cell through the conductive aluminium sheet that's at the bottom of it. The electrons return to the early position, making this a reusable and renewable source of power. In this process, a single silicon produces around half a volt, which is not very much, but if wired together, they can produce a bigger amount of power. 12 photovoltaic cells are enough, for instance, to run a calculator or a smartphone charger, but not enough for other objects like a microwave, which needs 120 volts. For this reason, it is easy to understand why solar cells are wired together to form a solar panel, which normally has between 36 to 144 cells. Several of these solar panels are grouped into a solar array to produce enough electricity to power an average household. But the energy does not go direct into the house electrical system. <clears throat> Firstly, the solar cells generate direct current instead of the alternative current our devices need. For that reason, all solar panel systems have a so-called DC to AC converter, as well as a battery or capacitor to store the energy. As sunlight can vary from moment to moment in the day or place to place in the globe. Finally, the most efficient solar cells still only convert around 50% of their receiving sunlight to electricity, and most of the commercial brands can only convert around 30%. As discouraging and inefficient this all may sound at first, many homeowners around the world are seeing benefits from their installations. For example, 20.3% of Australian homes use solar power as a result of an increasing trend over the last years. And as we now know after this video, there's still a huge room for improvement for this technology. So it may be feasible to say that solar power can be the future of renewable sources. Thank you very much.